During the rule of Herod king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah. He was part of the Abijah family of working priests, and his wife Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron. Both of them led a blameless life, faithfully keeping all God's commands and decrees. But they had no children because Elizabeth was infertile, and by this time they were both very old. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God, he was picked at random, as was the custom of the serving priests, to go into the inner temple area to burn incense to glorify God. What happened next would change his life forever. Hello, Zachariah. Don't be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayers have been heard. You and Elizabeth are going to have a baby boy. You must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you both and to many others. He will be a great man of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, even before he is born. He will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah and will prepare people for the coming of the Messiah. Mm, I don't know. Sounds too good to be true. I'm an old man, you know. My wife ain't exactly dancing on TikTok. I am the flipping ark angel Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to you to tell you this great news. And now, since you didn't believe me, you will be mute until all the things I've said has fallen into place. Meanwhile, the people who had been praying and were waiting for Zachariah to come out were wondering why he was taking so long. When Zachariah had finished his duties, he went home to Elizabeth. She became pregnant, and she kept to herself for five months. She was so happy. She said, God has done this amazing thing for me. At last, he has shown favor to me, and I am no longer an outcast. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a young lady in Nazareth, Galilee. Her name was Mary. She was engaged to a man called Joseph, who was descended from King David. Hello Mary, you are one very special lady. God is with you. That confused Mary. She wondered what kind of greeting that was. Don't be afraid, Mary. You have had favour with God. God will make him king and ruler, above and beyond his ancestor David. He will reign forever, and his kingdom will never end. What? But how can it be? I'm a virgin and intend to be until I get married. That's okay. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit will do this with the power of the Most High. Your baby will be the Holy Child and will be called the Son of God. And guess what? Your cousin Elizabeth is going to have a baby too, despite her age. She is currently six months pregnant, even though everybody said she was past it. God's word never fails. Wow, that's so cool. I can't believe he's chosen me. I will serve and make everything he says come true. I can't go see Elizabeth. It was a long trek to Elizabeth's from Nazareth, long enough for Mary to write a song about all she had just experienced. My soul magnifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in my Saviour.
Papa. It's me. Mary! Oh, oh. Lizzie, let go of me. I can't breathe. I'm so sorry. I'm just so excited to see you. You're such a special lady. And I'm not the only one that's excited to see you because this baby jumped for joy when he heard your voice. Now, come in, come in. We've got so much to talk about. By the time Elizabeth and Zachariah's baby was eight days old, all the friends and neighbours had heard about him and came round for his naming ceremony. They were all ready to follow tradition and name him Zachariah after his father. His name is John! But you don't have any relatives named John. All the friends and neighbours were amazed, and people couldn't stop talking about it all over the country. They wondered what the baby would grow up to be. They could see that God had something special for him. Zachariah wrote his song, and you can find it in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 67 to 79. Meanwhile... I can't believe Mary pregnant. Who on earth is the father? What happened to her? She's betrayed to me. I can't marry her now, but I don't want to humiliate her. She'd be a public disgrace. I don't want that for her. Maybe if I just go for a really quiet divorce, I can smooth things over for her. Yeah, that's what I'll do. A quiet divorce. Don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because the baby she's carrying was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. <sighs> that makes my decision much easier. No way I'm going to ignore that dream. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Six months later. How many times do we have to do this? Don't be afraid. Okay, calm now. Right, I've got some good news for you. Today in Bethlehem, the Messiah has been born, and you get to meet him. He'll be wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Trust me, he's the only baby boy born today in a manger. No way are you going to see another sight like this again. <laughs> When Jesus was six weeks old, they travelled to the temple in Jerusalem for his dedication and Mary's re-entry into normal society. They brought with them two pigeons instead of a lamb for the sacrifices as this was all they could afford. While they were there, they met two amazing people. The first was Simeon. Grandpa Simeon, come tell us the bedtime story! Settle down, settle down. I've got a good one for you. It happened today, actually. The Holy Spirit told me I wouldn't, I wouldn't die before I saw the Lord's Messiah. I've been getting in a bit impatient as I'm getting on a bit. How old are you, Granddad? I'm as old as my tongue and older than my teeth. What is your teeth then? It's for me to know and you to find out. Mum, how old is Granddad? I want to hear the rest of the story. He's asleep. How does he do that? Oh, where was I? 
and, and impatient. Oh, oh yes. So anyway, I had this feeling. I had this feeling that I couldn't shake. But I should go to the temple. The Holy Spirit's like that sometimes. Wow! So off I went as fast as I could. Never mind my gammy here. I made good time too. I was wandering around, looking about, and the Holy Spirit brought a young couple with a baby to my attention. And I realised that this baby is who I've been waiting for all these years. I just had to hold him and praise God for everything it will do for the world. I must have gone on for at least five minutes. I don't think his parents knew what Jesus was destined for. I gave them a blessing and a special message for Mary, his mother, to prepare her for the sheer magnitude of the effect that her son will have on the world. Some will welcome him, others will scorn him, and one day she must prepare for a sorrow that will cut right to the heart. Poor oh, Mary. Yes, it does look pretty sad for Mary, but don't worry, this isn't the end of the story. It's the beginning of an even better one. This was hands down the best day of my life. Finally, I can die happy. Is he dead? I don't know. You poke him. No, I don't want to poke him. You poke him. I'll poke him. Oh, will you let an old man sleep, little rascals? Simeon wasn't the only one to know the Messiah had come to visit. Anna was an impressive lady. Sadly, only seven years after she married, her husband died. After that, she spent the rest of her life at the temple as a prophet. You could always find her there, every day, any time, day or night, worshipping God and fasting and praying. This child is so special. Thank you, God, for sending this child, our Messiah, to your people. Have you seen him? Come and have a look. He's so amazing. Come and praise him. Once Mary and Joseph had done all that was required of them by law, they went back home. Many months later. Wise men from the east saw a significant kingship star during King Herod's rule and went to Jerusalem to ask where to find the newborn king of the Jews. Herod hadn't had a baby. So he contacted the Jewish experts to find out where their traditions said their Messiah would be born. They said, Bethlehem. So he hatched a cunning plan and told the Magi that he too would like to go and worship this new baby king. He found out from them when the star had first appeared and told them to report back to him when they found this child. The star carried on guiding them and led them to the house where the family was living. They were able to present their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh to Mary and her child. God showed the Magi in a dream to avoid Herod, so they returned home a different way. Joseph, get up. Harold is hunting down the child. You must take Jesus and Mary to escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you otherwise. Now go, no time to waste. Oh yes, and... Wake up! Mary, you have to go. Bring Jesus as well. I'll tell you on the way. Okay. So Mary and Joseph took Jesus and went to Egypt where they stayed until Herod's death and then finally went home to Nazareth in Galilee.